Hi everyone, today I will be presenting a framework to detect track-specific microstructural anomalies in single subjects. I have nothing to declare. Most clinical diffusion MRI studies rely on the statistical comparison between large groups of patients against controls to study disease. Such approaches include voxel-based analysis, or TBSS, or the more recently proposed tractometry framework. However, clinical heterogeneity and rare cases can greatly challenge the discriminating power of these studies, as nicely illustrated by the work of Marquin on normative modeling in fMRI. Let's take a look at the last scenario here. Now imagine comparing FA between healthy controls and a population with varying levels of FA, some go up, some go down with disease. The overall effect might result in no difference between the two groups due to heterogeneity within the patient's group. So here, to shift from group-wise comparison to a more personalized approach, we present an anomaly detection framework to push diffusion MRI tractometry towards single subject analysis. And this is based on the anomaly detection principle, where, by definition, an outlier is an observation which deviates so much from other observations as to arise suspicion that it was generated by a different mechanism. In general, anomalies have the following important characteristics. They are different from the norm. So various techniques exist, ranging from traditional z-scores to multidimensional approaches like PCA, or, as we will see in this talk, using artificial neural networks. Diffusion MRI data were acquired from 90 typically developing children. We also acquired data from eight children with a CNV at high genetic risk of neurodevelopmental and psychiatric disorders, which are relatively rare and challenging to recruit for research imaging, creating a so-called class imbalance between the two groups. This was done using a connectome MRI scanner and a multi-shell acquisition with a b-value up to 6,000. Now, for this unique kids dataset, we invested a lot of time to provide a comprehensive pre-processing pipeline to remove or reduce artifacts. This included slice-wise outlier detection, image denoising, signal drift correction, subject motion and distortion correction, combined with gradient nonlinearity correction, specific to the connectome, the removal of Gibbs ringing artifacts, and finally the generation of physically implausible signal maps. Automated white matter tract segmentation was performed using TractSeg to extract 26 relevant white matter bundles, which were mostly association pathways thought to be involved in atypical development. FA and MD metrics were derived using the lowest shell and rotationally invariant spherical harmonics, or RISH, were derived for each participant using the highest shell, where we assume that most of the extra axonal diffusion is gone. One can think of RISH0 as the isotropic contribution to the signal, and RISH2 as the anisotropic energy for that order. Then we use the tractometry approach to profile each of these metrics along the 26th bundle, along 20 points per bundle. The resulting track profiles were concatenated to form a feature vector for each of these metrics, which were then corrected for age and sex. The aim of an autoencoder is to learn a representation, so the encoding part, for a set of data, typically for dimensionality reduction. This is done by slowly compressing the input via a series of layers up to a bottleneck layer. The decoding side uses a symmetric architecture where the autoencoder tries to regenerate the original input by minimizing the reconstruction error between the two. Then, given the new input, we can use this reconstruction error as a distance metric that quantifies the degree of deviation of that subject with respect to the learned group representation. So in the context of brain tissue microstructure, anomalies can be referred to as contextual outliers because we need contextual understanding for example, individual pathways can appear normal in isolation, but when considered as a whole, like a network, the relationship can result in collective outliers. So to recap, we start with the tractometry approach. We then train a neural network to learn what a normal population look like. Then we compare our CNV subjects to that representation using a bootstrap approach. 
This was done to derive conservative estimates and assess variations within the model. This process was repeated a hundred times. We then evaluate the mean area under the curve of the rock curve across iterations and compare our approach with traditional z-score and principal component analysis compared with the Mahalanobis distance as anomaly scores. For all four microstructural metrics, the autoencoder approach was better at identifying C and V subjects as outliers, providing substantially higher sensitivity specificity trade-offs. In particular, the risk zero feature showed a higher discriminating power with an area under the curve of 0.86 compared with the mean univariate z-score and multivariate PCA approaches. This could potentially be explained by the framework's ability to handle high-dimensional data non-linearly. In particular, all of the CNV subjects had an anomaly score larger than the mean of the typically developing children, and 50% of them were larger than the 95th percentile of that population. A closer look into the anomaly scores showed that most of them occurred along the inferior longitudinal fasciculus and the optic radiation bundles, both bilateral, which are two association bundles that run into the temporal lobe. A key advantage of using deep autoencoder for anomaly detection over traditional PCA-based approaches is their unique ability to interpret anomaly scores based on feature inspection. Here, if we look at a typically developing children, the overall reconstructed features matches the input. This testifies that the autoencoder learned what a healthy representation should look like. In the CNV subject, we see various discrepancies highlighted along multiple tracks. Those were assessed using a permutation approach. The difference between the two can then be further interpreted in the context of tissue microstructure. Now to conclude, our tractometry-based anomaly detection framework is a first step towards personalized approaches by transitioning away from the traditional group-based comparison of patients against controls. Defining a baseline or normal microstructure requires domain expertise, and the boundary between normal and outliers is often not always precise. In the future, we plan to evaluate the framework in other clinical applications, such as on epilepsy patients. The tool will be made available on GitHub very soon. If you want to know more about the technique, please make sure to check out our short paper. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention, as well as our collaborators and funding agencies. Finally, I would like to invite you to look at Dr. Gench's talk on axon diameter for another application of the Kubrick Kids database.